Well, I like to do sketching on the farm uh, to try to figure out what animals look like. And as I'm drawing them, I'm always thinking about what their bones would be like underneath. And as a paleo artist, I always have to think about this, about how much we can know from bones alone and how much we can speculate about soft morphology, meaning lips and ears and fur and things like that, or in the case of dinosaurs, feathers. In here, I've got two skulls, a raccoon and a fox. And if you look at these skulls, if this was all you had, would you be able to guess what these creatures looked like? Supposing you looked at this raccoon, would you guess that it has the big furry sides of his cheeks, the dark eye patches, and the shape ears. And if you looked at this fox, would you ever guess what color it would be and uh, what the ears might look like? Bird skeletons are fairly deeply buried beneath the feathers. In the galliform birds, the pheasants and partridges and chickens and jungle fowl, they're mostly heavy-bodied birds that spend most of their time on the ground. The feathers on a newly hatched chick are still fairly downy. It takes some time for them to specialize into flight feathers. As I sketch them, I'm interested in the poses they get into and also the way that the feathers absorb the light. For most of the history of dinosaur science, our knowledge has begun and ended with the skeleton. Starting in the late 1990s, some discoveries of small two-legged meat-eating dinosaurs, the theropod group, showed some pretty advanced feather-like forms. I've got my sketching stuff with me, so let me take you along in real time while I sketch this chicken. Chickens don't pose. In fact, they mostly don't even stick around when you're trying to draw them, so I'm not above a little bit of bribery to keep them close in. I'm working on a sketchbook with watercolor paper using water-soluble colored pencils and a small watercolor set on the left with just about 10 colors. What's on my mind to do at this stage of a quick sketch is almost to do the painting as if I'm looking at it out of focus. I can always get sharpness and detail later, but it's hard to get softness later on. You have to get that in the beginning. One of the biggest differences between dinosaurs and birds is in the area of the tail, where most dinosaurs have long, thin tails going way out the back. In birds, the vertebrae stop into a bony structure that's the base for the connection of all the tail feathers. And this is important for flight for birds because they need to be able to uh, control the tail feathers for taking off and landing. Well, now I'm using a water brush filled with a dark blue fountain pen ink in order to paint the background. In the end, sketching chickens can really help with visualizing dinosaurs, especially for visualizing those soft parts like feathers and skin. We may never know for sure what a lot of dinosaurs look like, but we can bring our imagination to the task. And if nature is any guide, they're probably far stranger than we ever could have imagined. I hope you enjoyed. There's lots more videos of any of these buttons. And this is just a sample of a longer form DVD or download that you can get at those buttons that say Kunaki or Gumroad in the About section. Thanks for coming by.